We celebrate National Indigenous Day of Prayer as part of National Indigenous Awareness Month. And in advance of Canada's National Indigenous Peoples Day, which is tomorrow, June 21st, a day for all Canadians to recognize and celebrate the unique heritage, diverse cultures, and outstanding contributions of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. The Canadian Constitution recognizes these three groups as Aboriginal peoples, also known as Indigenous peoples. Although these groups share many similarities, they each have their own distinct heritage, language, cultural practices, and spiritual beliefs. In cooperation with Indigenous organizations, the Government of Canada chose June 21st, the summer solstice for National Aboriginal Day. For generations, many Indigenous peoples and communities have celebrated their culture and heritage on or near this day due to the significance of the summer solstice as the longest day of the year. This morning, our worship service will focus on education and awareness and i am recording parts of the service today from her majesty's royal chapel of the mohawks which is behind me it's located in branford this church was the first protestant church in upper canada and is now the oldest surviving church in ontario it was built in 1785 as part of the mohawk village that was established along the grand river which also runs behind me and although it's closed right now due to COVID, I would encourage you to visit sometime. Uh, take a tour, discover its history and its significance. In the meantime, you can check out uh, the website, which you can see just below me. It has a fascinating history and some beautiful photos uh, to share about the significance of this church and, and this area. And so we begin our worship this morning by acknowledging our kinship. Creator, we come together today as diverse, united peoples to give thanks to you, maker of heaven and earth. We come to listen, to learn, to sing and pray, to consider our place in the order of things you have created and are creating. It is right and good to give thanks for the land on which we stand, for this is wisdom we learn from indigenous peoples of this land, that we are one with the earth, its waters, air, animals, and plants. Such wisdom, our interdependence with all life, is something too easy to forget in our busy lives. It is a gift and a challenge to us to remember. And so we take time to acknowledge the lands on which we now live. Many of us have come from other places, arriving from distant shores, our families arriving years ago, or some of us more recently. When settlers came, they were met by others who were already here, already knew these lands, already lived rich and full lives based on ancient and proud cultures. Let us take time to remember the peoples of this land, the people who still call these lands home. Oh God, as we acknowledge the peoples who have lived on and stewarded these lands since time immemorial and their continued claims to the land, help us to become neighbors that we might live together in better ways. For we are all kin in Christ. All my relations with each other and this earth, its waters, air, animals, and plants. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Holy One, you are our rock, a foundation upon which we stand. Fill our hearts now with joy at your deep abiding presence. Encourage us by the teachings of Christ to live with care and compassion for self, friend, 
and neighbor. Bless us now as we reflect on our relations with indigenous peoples, our kin, as diverse yet united peoples. Amen. In 1981, Alberta Billy, a member of the Laktwich Wawaiki Nation in British Columbia, stood before the leaders of the United Church and asked the church to apologize to the native peoples of Canada for what you did to them in residential school. Billy was a lifelong member of the United Church who also represented Aboriginal church members at the Executive General Council. There have been several apologies made with respect to the atrocious experiences suffered by Aboriginal peoples through their forced attendance at residential schools in Canada. The first apology made by any institution in Canada came from the United Church of Canada in Sudbury, Ontario in 1986. We hear that apology today in remembrance and as a reminder. Long before my people journeyed to this land, your people were here. And you received from your elders an understanding of creation and of the mystery that surrounds us all that was deep and rich and to be treasured. We did not hear you when you shared your vision. In our zeal to tell you of the good news of Jesus Christ, we were closed to the value of your spirituality. We confused Western ways and culture with the depth and breadth and length and height of the gospel of Christ. We impose our civilization as a condition of accepting the gospel. We tried to make you be like us, and in doing so, we helped to destroy the vision that made you what you were. As a result, you and we are poorer, and the image of the Creator in us, twisted, 
blurred and we are not what we are meant by God to be. We ask you to forgive us and to walk together with us in the spirit of Christ so that our peoples may be blessed and God's creation healed. In 1988, the elders acknowledged this apology. Here is their response. The apology made to the native people of Canada by the United Church of Canada in Sudbury in August 1986 has been a very important step forward. It is heartening to see that the United Church of Canada is a forerunner in making this apology to native people. The All Native Circle Conference has now acknowledged your apology. Our people have continued to affirm the teachings of the native way of life. Our spiritual teachings and values have taught us to uphold the sacred fire, to be guardians of Mother Earth, and strive to maintain harmony and peaceful coexistence with all peoples. We only ask of you to respect our sacred fire, the creation, and to live in peaceful coexistence with us. We recognize the hurts and feelings will continue amongst our people, but through partnership and walking hand in hand, the Indian spirit will eventually heal. Through our love, understanding and sincerity, the brotherhood and sisterhood of unity, strength and respect can be achieved. The Native people of the All Native Circle Conference hope and pray that the apology is not symbolic, but that these are the words of action and sincerity. We appreciate the freedom for culture and religious expression. In the new spirit this apology has created, let us unite our hearts and minds in the wholeness of life that the Great Spirit has given us. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of James, reading from chapter 2, verses 14 through 18 and verse 26. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I by my works will show you my faith. For just as the body is without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. And so our work continues. We don't just apologize. We are committed to the work of reconciliation. In that commitment to reconciliation, the United Church issued another apology in 1998 to the families and communities that were part of the residential schools that were run by the United Church. We have certainly been reminded of the suffering that was experienced at those schools, as most recently we remember the 215 bodies that were discovered buried in a former residential school in Kamloops, BC, and potentially 104 more bodies found in Brandon, Manitoba. Manitoba. We know that there are more. If you are not aware of the history of residential schools, I would encourage you to become informed. There are a number of videos, books, and articles that have been written that will help to educate you. The United Church was certainly not the only church involved in residential schools. The Anglican, Catholic, Presbyterian, and Mennonite churches were also part of the residential school system. Residential schools operated in Canada between 1870 and 1996. 
It is estimated that over 150,000 Inuit, Indian, and Métis children attended residential school. As part of our ongoing work, we revised our United Church crest. We did some redesign work. You see the crest here. At the 41st General Council meeting in August 2012, we revised the crest to acknowledge the presence and spirituality of Indigenous peoples in the Church at the time of Union and now. The changes in the crest also denote that the Church was built on Indigenous land. You see the background colors of the quadrants. They reflect the four traditional colors of the Indigenous medicine wheel. Each color represents a different corner of the world and carries specific teachings. Yellow for the east, black for the south, red for the west, and white for the north. The Latin words ut omnis unum sint that surround the symbols on the crest mean that all may be one and are taken from the Gospel of John. Within the indigenous community, the phrase, all my relations, reflects that same inclusive vision of Christ. And you see that phrase there translated into the Mohawk language, which I unfortunately am not able to pronounce well. So we will just see the words there. Mohawk was chosen because the first documented ministry between indigenous peoples and the founding denominations began in 1822 between the Mohawks and the Methodist missionaries. Our crest expresses a desire for unity in the work of the church through the generations and that all will be equally welcome. Through the Creator's love and grace, may it be so. Our work continues as we established a healing fund in 1994. It is a grant that supports healing initiatives in Indigenous communities to address the ongoing impacts of the residential school system. Many name a need for mending, restoring and celebrating a sense of loss along with hope for rebuilding identity. Indigenous communities may apply up to, uh, for up to $15,000 to create healing, culture, and or language projects. Support for the United Church Healing Fund is movement towards living out the United Church's apologies, and the work is made possible through the financial support of congregations and individuals. If you would like to contribute to the work of the Healing Fund, you will find a link in the description of today's worship video. If you go on the YouTube site, uh, the link will be there. Our work continues as we respond as a church, as Mount Elgin United Church, as a community of faith. We wrestled with this. What can we do as a church? At our board meeting this past week, we committed to continuing to learn about Indigenous issues and to financially support the work of the Woodland Cultural Centre, which is located just down the road from this chapel. It is the site of a former residential school. It is a museum and an educational centre that serves to preserve and promote Indigenous history, art, language and culture. And so we would encourage you to make a donation. You can make a donation through your regular giving to the church and we will uh, forward it on to the Woodland Cultural Center. You can do that through your regular offering, just indicating that you would like to direct some of your funds to support that work. We will also be having donation jars at our food truck events this summer. And so if you will be uh, attending those, you can pop some money in the jar. We thank you in advance for your support and commitment to working towards justice and reconciliation. We know that there is much work to be done. And with God's help, we will continue to do that work of reconciliation so that indeed all may be one.
We give as an act of worship. We give out of our gratitude, out of our abundance. We give to the work of God through the mission and ministry of our local churches. If you would like to support the mission and ministry of Mount Elgin United Church, you can see the ways in which you can do that on your screen. You can drop off or mail checks either to the church or to the treasurer. You might want to consider signing up for PAR. You can seek out the Canada Helps button on our website, or you can arrange for an e-transfer. If you would like to support the mission and ministry of Newark United Church, you can mail your offering to our treasurer, Allison, and you see her address there on the screen. We do indeed give thanks for gifts given this day and every day. And so now let us join our hearts in a prayer of blessing and gratitude. It is our privilege creating one to share from our individual bounties. On these plates and in these bodies are our gifts to the world, money, commitment, and thanksgiving. We pray over these offerings in the name of the one who shared everything with us. Amen. God, we come together as a human family, blessed to be alive, blessed to be on this land, blessed to have neighbors as diverse as your creation. You surround us with the air we breathe, the water we drink, all manner of living plants and animals that delight us and sustain us. Thank you, Creator, for all you provide. We take a moment in silence to ponder the blessings you give us of family, friends, places to call home, the food we eat, the web of life in which we with all creatures live, move, and have our being. Hear us as we give thanks. Oh God, we thank you for Indigenous neighbors and friends this day. And yet we lament too. We lament that historic and contemporary racism continues to mar our relations. We lament the church's role as beneficiaries of an economic and governance system that privileges settler peoples at the expense of the first peoples of this land. We lament apathy in the face of the need for change, change that recognizes the sovereignty of the First Peoples and recognizes at long last, in ways that make a difference, the sacredness of the land and the need for all of us to walk humbly upon it. O oh God, for the witness of strength, caring and love of Indigenous peoples, and for the struggle for what is just and right, open our hearts this day. Encourage us to listen more, speak less. Participate in the movements for change that will bring us together in good and respectful ways. Encourage us to make friends, get to know someone's story, and share our stories too without fear. For in Christ we know we are all kin, relatives, with you and with each other. All this, as well as the prayers of our hearts, O oh God, we lift up to you. Hear our celebrations as we claim anew our kinship with you and with all our relations. Hear our laments and grow our hearts full of compassion for self and other as we leave this place to be a better friend and neighbor to all. We pray in the name of the Creator who is mother and father of us all. We pray as well in the Spirit of Christ whose words continue to guide our lives to today as we pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today, of course, is also Father's Day, and so we take time to recognize and celebrate the men in our lives and in our world. Let us praise those fathers who have striven to balance the demands of work, marriage, and children with an honest awareness of both joy and sacrifice. Let us praise those fathers who, lacking a good model for a father, have worked to become a good father. Let us praise those fathers who, by their own account, were not always there for their children, but who continue to offer those children, now grown, their love and support. Let us pray for those fathers who have been wounded by the neglect and hostility of their children. Let us praise those fathers who, despite divorce, have remained in their children's lives. Let us praise those fathers whose children are adopted and whose love and support has offered healing. Let us praise those fathers who, as stepfathers, freely choose the obligation of fatherhood and earned their stepchildren's love and respect. Let us praise those fathers who have lost a child to death and continue to hold the child in their heart. Let us praise those men who have no children but cherish the next generation as if they were their own. Let us praise those men who have fathered us in their role as mentors and guides. Let us praise those men who are about to become fathers. May they openly delight in their children. And let us praise those fathers who have died but live on in our memory and whose love continues to nurture us. However you are celebrating this day, whomever you are celebrating with, whomever you might be missing this day, we do extend our blessings on men everywhere. 
who are good father figures for the people in our lives. Happy Father's Day. We get ready to go out and live this week well. I am recording the benediction from this uh, monument. It marks what was the original uh, landing site of the canoes as they were coming in from the river. The river used to run behind here. It doesn't run there anymore. And then over this way is the, the chapel. But we remember this site where people would come and go from this village off and on the river. And so we come and we go. We have come together to worship and to remember. And I invite you to move from here, a reconciled and reconciling people with assurance that Creator God, Great Spirit, accompanies you this day and every day. Amen.